If you love brook trout or any of Maine's aquatic creatures, then you must learn to love culverts. They're an ancient and essential invention. Some culverts built by the Romans are still working after 2,000 years. And culverts are especially important in Maine, which has more than 5,000 rivers, streams, and brooks, and an extensive road network that is critical to the forest products industry. But each time a road meets a stream, there's a chance for things to go well or go badly, sometimes very badly. When culverts fail, it's usually because they're too small to handle a large amount of rain in a short amount of time. That's what happened on Desert Road in Freeport, says Earl Gibson, the Freeport Public Works Superintendent. When debris clogged the culvert, Merrill Brook overflowed. And, Gibson says, once water starts cutting into the shoulder, it's pretty much over. Desert Road was closed for two months, and repairs cost $192,358. A poorly built culvert also can stop fish and other aquatic creatures from moving upstream or down imprisoning them in small stretches of water and severely fragmenting habitat. Fortunately, these challenges are being addressed by a broad coalition that is strongly motivated to enhance fisheries and improve Maine's network of forest roads. The Fisheries Improvement Network uh, is a very exciting entity. It is bringing together uh, some great stakeholders that have been working together uh, for a while already. Uh, the state and federal agencies, the non-governmental environmental organizations, uh, the forest landowners, uh, everybody wants to get to the same endpoint, and that is uh, connected streams allowing passage for fish, uh, some of the important resources uh, for the state of Maine. The Nature Conservancy became involved because of our overlapping mission of protecting and improving resources and to working collaboratively, non-competitively, non-adversarially um, with, with the landowners in order to make positive changes happen in the North Maine woods. The idea for the Fisheries Improvement Network began with Maine's Sustainable Forestry Initiative. Maine has more privately owned certified forest land than any other state, including 7 million acres certified to the SFI standard, which makes improving water quality and wildlife habitat key elements of certification. It's a voluntary outcome-based approach, and that outcome-based approach that is being promoted through this network allows for a great deal of flexibility. The great thing about Finn is that it gets people who um, own and manage lands together with the resource agencies and the NGOs who are all working for a common goal. Everyone wants to improve fish passage. What's nice about this group is that we have a room full of people who know the tools of the trade, how to get things done, and they also have a passion for the resource, which we all share. Since Maine is home to 90% of the remaining native brook trout habitat in the lower 48 states, fish passage has been a component of SFI training since 2004. But the focus intensified after an Atlantic Salmon Recovery Plan for Maine was approved in 2007. We really are blessed with abundant brook trout habitat. We also have these migratory species, including Atlantic Salmon, uh, the last remaining wild Atlantic Salmon in the United States and Maine. And so there's a real clear resource purpose for doing this work. So with strong support from Keith Canote of the Maine Forest Service, SFI's fish passage training was redeveloped. And by 2011, SFI started teaching its key principles, known as the four S's, to the state's forestry industry. The four S's are span the stream, set the elevation, sediment in the stream crossing, slope is consistent with the stream. At its core, it's a very simple message. If you stand on a road or bridge, the stream should look the same upstream and downstream. We want the stream to act like a stream. And in this case, this, if you look downstream and you look upstream, they're completely different water courses. And that's the result of, of a crossing that's not uh, built with stream smart principles. The smaller the crossing, uh, the more it constricts the stream, the more likely it is to suffer from beaver activity, which is not only bad for the stream um, being blocked by um, the debris, um, it also is bad for the road, um, which in this case is washed out um, because beavers plugged the culvert went over the top of the road and, and washed out the road, so that's bad for the, the road budget, obviously, and has the effect of putting road fill into the stream downstream. Um, so older style crossings, older designs, um, smaller round culverts um, are probably more susceptible to this kind of beaver activity than, than the, some of the uh, newer 
uh, designs that we use we use now. Although beavers will be an issue everywhere <laughs> at some point, most likely. Also in 2011, Maine Audubon adapted those same principles into the Stream Smart program for the state's municipal officials. This has been a fantastic collaboration all the way through. Um, I think it's enlightened a lot of people on, you know, the, the sort of a false economies based on installation alone versus um, installation in relation to maintenance of the culvert. And the long term should be balanced with the short term. And, um, you know, we're really providing you know, a really good background education and examples of how to actually do it. Education and outreach efforts have expanded and become much more memorable thanks to the addition of the SFI flume table. You see what's happening here is this is what's called this tailwater control. That's controlling the elevation upstream. So we're basically scouring this down and we're basically creating a higher perch there as these flows happen. I found it very interesting in the fact that we have over in Farmington on the San Diego River we have some similar issues and he's just showed, showed me in reality how some of this thing can change in adverse reactions that one action up here you have a reaction downstream. So the Street Smart training I think has been an incredible success. You think about four or five hundred people around the state that have been exposed to, to the concepts of Stream Smart um, connectivity issues and um, you know a whole range of people from foresters to municipalities to consultants to citizens and I think um, you kind of see it as this awakening and people understanding that, that there is a problem but their solutions. In 2012, with more than 30 government and non-government agencies working to evaluate, prioritize, and improve the state's fisheries habitats, the SFI committee saw a need to better inform landowners about the many initiatives underway, especially those involving stream crossings. So the SFI committee worked with the Maine Forest Service, Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, Maine Department of Marine Resources, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to establish FIN, which has become a lively forum where private forest landowners meet with agency officials for briefings and discussions. Private landowners are sharing information on new techniques, new installations, new approaches to stream connectivity. Um, we're coming forward with habitat data and, and stream inventories, stream road crossing inventories. And, um, you know, what Finn has really done is set up this forum for exchanging information and really trying to increase the pace of restoring connectivity in our stream systems. We're in East Moxie Township, and this is Alder Stream. We're here looking at a concrete waste block bridge that was put in in 2011. The old bridge was struck a hemlock, because a typical hemlock bridge abutment has about a 20 year lifespan. When those started to crumble, we decided to place the bridge and we did not want to use hemlock again. We opted to go with the waste blocks. They're a relatively new idea. We're estimating maybe about a 50 year lifespan on these. Projects such as this are very important to our clients. Uh, with Ragger Forest Management, our clients are very dedicated to the uh, concept of sustainable forestry, such as clean water, wildlife habitat, fishery habitat, this is a natural fit for us. We're also required as we maintain infrastructure in our roads to have good crossings that are low cost for our clients but also that are environmentally friendly. In this way we can maintain fish passage through here, the streams aren't altered and the water stays clean and the, and the trout stay happy. With the FINS network helping us identify where there's barriers, uh, not allowing fish passage, we're able to prioritize our work. When we're working in an area, if we know that we have a barrier in place, we can go ahead and design a structure just like this one that'll allow um, fish passage through it. It's, it's much easier from a cost standpoint if we can do the work while we're in the area rather than having to jump around all over our ownership. There are still tens of thousands of crossings in Maine that need upgrades, but remarkable progress is being made. This work is incredibly important and it's nice that everyone within just a few years sort of has this on their minds. It's part of our common consciousness now that fish passage is important and it's good to see people doing something about it. Mm -hmm.